Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching the Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, on Monday, making the first bilateral visit by an Indian Prime Minister to the Nordic nation in 30 years. Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven received Modi at the airport. Modi is on a first leg of his five-day foreign tour, which will also take him to the United Kingdom, where he will attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. In Sweden, Prime Minister Modi held extensive talks with Löfven and his government. India and Sweden will also jointly organize the India Nordic Summit in Stockholm on Tuesday. The summit will also be attended by the Prime Ministers of Finland, Norway, Denmark and Iceland. The summit holds significance given India's strong economic ties with at least four of the five Nordic nations. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will discuss what to expect from the Indo-Nordic Summit. Joining me on the program uh, today are Professor Gulchan Sachdeva, Center for European Studies, JNU, Shashank, former Foreign Secretary, K.P. Fabian, former diplomat, and Akhile Suman, Foreign Affairs Editor of Rajya Sabha Television. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Akhile Suman, I'd like to begin with you, of course. Uh, uh, you know, what is it that uh, India is taking to the table as far as the Indo-Nordic Summit is concerned? Yeah, actually, the talks between the two prime ministers, Swedish and Indian prime minister, has already been over. And now, uh, we, uh, after an hour, I think that uh, the Indian uh, prime minister and other five Nordic prime ministers will be having a summit-level meeting. This is the first meeting. And I, you know that India wants to give them a special status, like uh, grouping the way we give a status to the ASEAN nations. The same way India is thinking that the Nordic nations should not be just considered as a bilateral affair, but also a regional affair with India. This is the key thing that India wants to give an uh, idea and give a projection like that, that this is not a, just a separate uh, five countries, but they have a... Uh, their own correlation and they can correlate themselves and correlate with India together. So this is the prime uh, tactics with India is working with Nordic nations. And the other thing that you know that uh, Nordic nations have been very silently but very prominently been developing and they are uh, developed countries of the world and now India wants to create a certain situation when they can uh, cooperate together not only in the development process of India but also on the key issues of India in international affairs, uh, the key political issues that uh, are related to the United Nations reform, also on terrorism and also on the issues related to democratization of all the international institutions. Sure. So these are the three key themes on which India wants to work with the Nordic nations. Indeed. Right. And, and what's on the agenda as far as the Indo-Nordic uh, summit itself is concerned, Akhilesh? Yeah, agenda is very obvious that agenda is the one thing that how Nordic nations can join India in its development process. The, we have so many programs like Make in India, like Skill, uh, skill Development, like Startup India. Uh, and these are the th key issues around which Prime Minister Narendra Modi had been working. The, we need uh, innovation in agriculture sector also. And uh, one of the Nordic countries, that is Denmark, is one of the best in agriculture sector. And also, in, you know, that uh, um, uh, cattle growing, uh, the milk production, the dairy products, Denmark is superb. So India, one of the agenda is this also. And other agenda is the security cooperation, the cyber security issue, and also the issues related to terrorism and uh, change in the governance system of the world, that is the reform in United Nations. All right, Akhile Suman, thank you for joining us there with the latest uh, as far as the Indo-Nordic summit is concerned. Let me now uh, uh, bring in my panelists as well in our studio and talk about the summit a little further. Beginning with you, Ambassador Shashank. How important is the Nordic sub-region for us? Well, Nordic sub-region is both strategically and economically is extremely important. These countries are fairly close to the uh, erstwhile Soviet Union and several of the uh, earlier republics of Soviet Union they are part of the European Union and very close to the Nordic countries, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, and all these. So therefore, there is a certain kind of a better understanding of the dynamic of what goes on in Eastern Europe, in Russia, 
the same way as India has to have, because India has its long-term relationship with them. So that is strategically, their view is of much, uh, very perceptive for India. Second is that economically, they are very developed. There was a time when they really did not have that much of energy resources, but ultimately they also benefited from the uh, North Sea oil. Denmark became one of the uh, major oil producing countries, energy producing countries. And now that the Arctic is warming up, so there are chances of many more resources opening up in the Northern Seas. And there seems to be a race going on among all the major powers to find navigation channels and uh, oil exploration, other resource explorations in that area. Finally, I would say that these countries have such strong connectivity among themselves that whether it's their universities, whether they are R&D centers or their companies, corporations, they have a complete merging of the manpower and all kinds of resources. So even their best R&D centers, I think they have their centers or sub-centers located in different parts of Nordic countries. Now India can learn benefit from that. So if we try to develop bilateral relations with only one country, we will not be able to take full advantage of that. And finally, we have seen that when we deal with the European Union or European countries, the southern European countries many times have similar commodity interests that India has. So they try to take a view based on their own uh, domestic compulsions. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Nordic countries in those respects are much more open and they feel that a country like India and other developing countries should be given much greater uh, resourceful uh, support from the European Union. Finally, as regards Denmark, because I have lived in Denmark for some time, uh, their agriculture uh, was at one time in a very bad shape on two grounds. One was that a lot of chemicals had been used, which had gone into the leaching of the earth and also in the river waters. Mm. So they had to come out of that. And secondly, uh, because of the cold climate, they were not able to carry out much agricultural activity. Right. So what they have done is consolidated their agricultural wealth. And two things they have done, they have got the green uh, cards. That means that anybody involved in any agricultural activity has to be a green card holder or has to have a manager hmm. who is a green card holder. Hmm. And secondly, they have taken over most of the milk production in Nordic countries under one company only. So therefore, with this consolidation of the farmhouses and of the dairy activities, they have been able to use all the efficiencies of scale. Sure. So I think we can learn quite a bit about Amul dairy has learned a lot from the Nordic okay. countries and many other areas, even There's a lot of hand pumps, etc. There Europe. are many areas of cooperation and a lot that India can learn from yes. the Nordic countries is what you're suggesting. Professor, that said, why is it that we have neglected the North over the years? Well, I don't think we have really neglected in that sense, but only thing is that now with this particular summit happening, this is, I think is a very uh, good initiative, a, a very interesting development. How we are going to use it, only time is going to tell. Because if you look at this region, for quite some time now, the Nordic region is known for their economic performance. It is known for uh, technological development. It is known for uh, good governance. And it's also known for the social welfare model. So in a sense, this has been quite successful uh, kind of an area where both ideologically, even if you're from right or you're from left, both can learn something from this particular region where you have a kind of very interesting combination of uh, market because they believe in free markets. At the same time, they also have very important social welfare model in place. So in fact, uh, so that's the kind of area, uh, and now they are actually, whether or not the kind of social welfare model they have achieved so far, now there are certain issues, there are certain problems within the Nordic model. Uh, they are worried that can they continue sustaining the similar kind of model for the years to come. And now they are looking diversification, because broadly they are integrated with the European market, whether they are member of the EU or some of them are not member of the EU, or some of them are uh, outside Eurozone, Finland is part of Eurozone, but broadly they are part of European integration model. Now, and you know, like, and the uh, Norwegians with their uh, sovereign funds, 
in a huge amount of money. Mostly that money was invested in Western countries and other places. Now they are looking for diversification. So that's a good opportunity for India. Now this is an area, these countries have resources, they have technologies, although they are small countries, but they can offer quite a lot in mm. many, many areas. Mm. And we are looking for all the investment, we are looking for technology, and we are also looking for certain ideas, you know, these are the best models for good governance anywhere in the world. So you can learn them, you can also take advantage from their experiences, and I think if we follow very uh, thoroughly later on, hmm. you know, from the you know the first India Nordic uh, summit, I think many more will follow in the years to come, and there would be many opportunities for India to take advantage from the kind of changes which they are looking for within their own societies and the way they are going to diversify their resources to other countries. So sure. we can tap into this. And particularly they are looking actually many Asian countries, China, India and a couple of other uh, mm. Southeast mm. Asian countries they are looking. And we should really take advantage from okay, this. Okay, we should take advantage of the situation is what the professor is suggesting, Ambassador Fabian. Uh, you know, like the previous two panelists have suggested, the Nordic region or the countries from the Nordic region have been punching above their weight for quite some time now as far as the world is concerned. Does it make sense then for us to engage with them fully and at what level? It makes good sense and uh, I am so heartened to see that this summit is taking place because uh, the Nordic region, I would say, is the most integrated in the world. Uh, I remember when I was in Finland, the Swedish ambassador uh, would not know that uh, delegations from Sweden have come and visited Finland because all officials at the level of deputy secretary and above, they keep in touch in these countries among themselves and they are on a first name basis. So the foreign office or the ambassador does not have come much into the picture. That is their level of integration. Then, of course, engineers, architects, poets, and others, you know. So integration, they have carried it to an extent. Uh, and uh, we in India, in South Asia, and elsewhere can learn a lot. Now, as regards the Nordic countries, let me put it this way. 27 million is their population, slightly less than India's population. Mm. But uh, the total GDP comes to 1.1 trillion, little less than half of India's GDP. And uh, correctly, emphasis has been made about their excellence in uh, economic growth, competitivity, and uh, social welfare, uh, good governance. But also, I should like to draw attention to education. In terms of education, for example, say Finland and other Nordic countries too, right at the top. The other day I was reading that in Finland, they have decided that uh, now it is uh, the third grade. At third grade, uh, you start learning a foreign language. Now by 2020, they are going to start from grade one. Mm. And uh, another thing I have noticed, uh, for example, in Finland is that uh, such is importance attached to education or being a teacher. I've come across uh, young people when I used to visit, uh, what's your ambition in life? My ambition? Oh, to be a teacher here. Yeah. What about coming to Helsinki and teaching? Oh, Helsinki is a big city. I would prefer to be in my town. Mm -hmm. So there is so much of rootedness there. And uh, another thing is that uh, the Nordic countries are uh, peace-loving. They don't use uh, abrasive language, which at times one feels is getting less and less rare these days. Right. And uh, you take Norway, for example. It has done good work uh, in the Middle East, the Oslo process. Yes. And uh, even in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka I mean, well, it yeah. didn't, uh, you know, c completely deliver. But the point is, they tried hard. Hmm. Hmm. So what I mean is that, you know, there is so much uh, uh, we can uh, observe from what they are doing. And another area is, uh, uh, you know, uh, energy efficiency. Right. I mean, how do you use energy to produce more economic output? Sure. 
and even uh, nuclear safety regulation. Uh, I was struck by what the Finnish ambassador Nina uh, Vasklanti said, you know, that uh, their uh, nuclear regulatory board is one of the best in the world. Sure. So there is scope. And last, uh, the glo our trade is... Uh, 5.3 billion. Four, well, is it 5.3 yes, or 4? 2016-17 is 5.3 billion between India and the Nordic countries. Okay. Now, that should be raised. And there again, I would say it is not that uh, the Prime Ministers can agree on a target because some of them are with the EU, some of them are not with the EU. What is to be done is at the level of the... FIKI and uh, CII and their counterparts. It is for the business people to agree among themselves. Okay, it is now, as sure. you said, five point. Now let's raise it to seven, eight in the right. years to come. You know, uh, Ambassador Shashank, there's tremendous potential as far as trade between the Nordic region and India is concerned. $5.3 billion seems to be a very paltry sum. How do we enhance that? How do we reach full potential of ties? <coughs> you know, I think our best Fabian has said the right thing, that if we leave it to the business communities, allow them to come together, have tie-ups with themselves, I'm sure that they would be able to move much further. The second thing, of course, is that their Nordic countries are all the time uh, concentrating on innovation, on new technologies, because they are short of manpower, and therefore... They want to do the things in the best manner possible in order to capture the markets uh, globally. And therefore, we can work on that basis that when we are going for the uh, Make in India programs, that what we are going to do in future should not be only for India, but also keeping in mind that we are integrating ourselves with the South Asian markets and the Southeast Asian markets. So then we should be able to develop those facilities for the whole region. Secondly, I have found that they are very uh, efficient, uh, not only in energy production, but also in the waste recycling. And uh, they have the very, very fine methods of uh, waste segregation and then recycling. So if, suppose we are starting with the two uh, types, organic and the uh, recyclable waste. In their cases, in many of their societies, I found communes that they were having 30 uh, varieties of segregations, so that especially those with the chemicals, strong chemicals, were sent out only to one facility where they can be treated very carefully and they are not allowed to leach into the ground, etc., or water. Others, they are able to then recycle or then use, turn it into some kind of a uh, compost. And ultimately, in some of the areas I found that they were also set up, the, so they were setting up the symbiotic kind of factory, so which means the waste from one factory became the resource for the next factory. Sure. So then they were able to cut down the expenses, though they are very expensive places, but they have cut down expenses by using these various methods. So I think one can learn from them Indeed. on all these things. And they're very keen to partner with India because they have seen that whenever they have gone to America and elsewhere, they have found that the brightest students have come from Asia, hmm. including India. Hmm. And so every time I went to meet the presidents of various universities, they always have sent us some young people from India. We want young Indians to right. partner with our uh, young people because that is when the real in inventions and innovations come up. Sure. You know, Professor, as far as uh, the Nordic countries are concerned, what is it that they expect from us? Well, obviously, they expect a couple of things from India. One is you raise the issue of trade and investment. Now... We have been negotiating with the European Union since 2007. Now, negotiations are frozen, as some of them are member of EU. And uh, even if they are not member of EU, but they are member of EFTA, so the moment any negotiation is complete with the EU, automatically that will more or less would be applied to India EFTA as well. So they are quite keen that this negotiation must move forward and we conclude as quickly as possible. Secondly, on investments, because many of the investment uh, treaties, uh, now India has already scrapped uh, 50, 60 of those bilateral investment treaties and many of them also within the European countries. So I think uh, we also need to be very careful about those uh, investment treaties. I mean, either we conclude bilateral trade and investment agreement with EU and later on with EFTA, 
or we continue, I mean it's not continuing now because many of them have already been scrapped, so that's one area. Uh, at the same time, now these countries, uh, they are also very conscious about a couple of issues, whether it's a nuclear non-proliferation or it's democracy uh, or institutions of democracy, free press, human rights, gender issues, um, you know, uh, climate change, environment. Now, sometime in the past, some of these countries were irritant uh, in bilateral relations, some of these issues. But at the same time, you know, the, the kind of countries they are, very transparent and they are very seriously working on some of those issues. Now, we are also working our own institutions, whether you look at environment, renewables, human rights, uh, gender issues, uh, violence against women, all of those issues are very, very they are quite serious about all those issues. So we must be very conscious when we are actually talking to the Nordic region. So we must be very, very transparent in the way we are dealing these issues. And there are many things they offer to us in uh, strengthening institutions related to whether human rights or conflict resolution or climate change or environmental issues or you know, strengthening further our own democratic sure. institutions. So I think that there is a large area uh, apart from economics in all these areas and they are quite seriously interested in working in India and many other countries and also they are very uh, serious players in development cooperation. Okay. Uh, they, they provide a lot of development assistance and India is also becoming an important uh, player in the development cooperation. So we can also work together with many of these, uh, you know, these are the only few countries where they have already achieved target of 0.7 percent, which is, you know. Indeed. Uh, uh, yeah. Indeed. You know, yeah. Ambassador Fadiman, what is it that we would like to see being taken away from the first Indo-Nordic summit? Well, we have already spoken about uh, trade and uh, investment naturally can be added and technology also has been uh, mentioned. Uh, I would also like to add cultural cooperation. Let me give you one example. I found that in Finland, in the textbooks, uh, India was described, you know, as a country of uh, snake charmers and, you know, that sort of thing. Now, I spoke to the uh, textbook writers. Incidentally, they are known as non-fiction writers. Mm. And the government does nothing to do with the textbooks. And uh, so I said, you should send a delegation to India. They sent a delegation to India, and uh, I put them in touch with the NCRT. And the NCRT sent a delegation from India, and the depiction of India in the Finnish textbooks improved. Sure. Now, what I would say is that when also we had uh, Shakuntala there, stays in Finland. It was so wonderful to see a blonde Shakuntala and speaking, you know, uh, Sanskrit, you know, original Sanskrit. So this we have to push. And let me tell you that there is interest. There is interest in uh, Indian culture in the Nordic countries. Uh, we have to push it a little. Okay. All right. Quick uh, closing comments now from all my guests, starting with you, Ambassador Shashank. Going forward, is this the way we're going? Is this what India's diplomacy is going to look like, where we are going to, uh, you know, identify smaller sub-regions and, 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 you know, address them directly, or, is it, or should we concentrate on bilaterals? No, bilateral has to be done in any case, but the point is that India is just too big a country, and so other big countries in the world, whether it's USA, China, or others, they, are, they have started this kind of a system, uh, organizing meetings, with the sub-region, and those sub-regional countries are also interested in carrying on this activity because then they feel that they have an equal weight. So we should encourage that equal weight from the, their side. And the other thing I have seen is that those countries in Nordic region, they have been able to work out very good technologies for defense sector. And they are quite willing to have offsets in India. And since the Norwegians and many others, they have big sovereign funds. So the offsets, they can transfer to India very easily without insisting on the technology coming only sure. from them. Because sure. that can come from the whole Nordic region. Right. And that money can come on the basis of whatever purchases we are making on the defense Indeed. side. Indeed. Professor? Well, I think this is a very uh, useful development which need to be followed up in the years to come. And, uh, I mean, you know, for the last two years, 
I can see that Europe has come to kind of, you know, a foreign policy agenda of India. So, Prime Minister has visited many countries. We have also the EU-India summit uh, meetings have taken place. Now, this is one region we have identified. Similarly, we can also identify perhaps some other regions like Central and Eastern Europe. And then within this region, I think specific areas. We can attract a lot of investment from this region, sure. technology, renewables, uh, and also an area, this is also a place where people have a lot of trust in this state. Indeed. Which is not the many, many places where you will find. Ambassador Thank Fabian, you. close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Okay. Now, I already said, you know, we need the bilateral, but along with that, we need the regional and the sub-regional. I will only make one point. Yes. Whatever decisions are taken, they should be implemented. Okay. And both India and the other side. You sure. know, implementation is a key point. Okay, implementation is the key, is what Ambassador Fabian is saying. You know, you can sign many agreements, but if you don't follow through on them, there is no use at the end of the day. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.